Hey everybody, it is time to learn about gas laws. So what I want you to do before we do anything else is I want you to take a deep breath in. Let it out. Okay, let's concentrate. Okay, again. All right, first things first, we need to review all of the pressure and temperature units that we've gone over in other chapters because this is where it all comes about. So what we talked about before with pressure is that we have atmospheric pressure at here at sea level. We have one whole atmosphere's worth of pressure above us. That is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. That is equal to 760 torr and 101.3 kPa. So you need to be comfortable with getting back and forth between all of the units. So this is a little bit of a review. So if it's asking you um, millimeters of mercury and kPa, you need to make sure that you use the correct conversion factors. So from what we just said, we know that 101.3 kPa is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So we're going to start off with our 150.3 kPa. And we are going to put kPa on the bottom and 760 mmHg up top so that what cancels out? That's all right. kPa is on and we have our mmHg. In our calculator, what we do is we type in 150.3 times 760 and then divide by 101.3 kPa. All right, that is going to give us 11, 27, 46 mmHg. So you got to be really comfortable with converting all of our pressure units because we have to make sure that pressure is in the same unit on each side of our equation because we're basically looking at a whole bunch of proportions whether it's directly or inversely proportioned and we have to make sure that they work out so again whatever your starting unit is here make sure it is on the bottom over here so that you cancel it out and get to the correct unit on each side okay now, another thing that might come up in our notes, in our worksheets, is this standard conditions or standard pressure. That means all of those conversion factors that you've seen. So if it says at STP, that's the standard temperature and pressure, all of those things are equal to one another. Choose the one that works best for that problem. Okay? Convert if you have to, but just choose the one that's the easiest. You can work in KPA, TOR, Atmospheres, or MMHG, unless it's the ideal gas law. And we'll talk about that later on in other videos. Okay, temperature-wise, to review for temperature, we have different temperature scales. We have <laughs> Fahrenheit, which you know I think is like an F word that we use here in the U.S., we have Celsius and we have Kelvin, all right? Fahrenheit is going to be what you are used to because of what we've been using, all right? For um, water freezing in Fahrenheit, it's going to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It boils at 212, but we can get colder than that. Okay, here's our body temperature and all that. We can go all the way down to negative 459, all right? Whereas Celsius scale is going to be based off of the properties of water. Okay, it has nice equal increments of 100 to 0, and absolute 0 is going to be negative 273. Kelvin moves this to the actual 0. Okay, so this is the Kelvin scale, and it would make 0 Celsius 273, and it would make this up here, the boiling point of water, 373. All right, and to kind of put it all into perspective, I love this graphic. All right, so Fahrenheit, if it's 0 degrees, yeah, that's really cold outside. Okay, it's um, because... 32, remember, is where we are freezing. But this is like cold Siberia. All right, 100 degrees out, yeah, it's really hot. All right, fairly cold outside for zero, yeah, Celsius. And if it's 100 degrees, we're, we're all dead because this is an insane.
insane amount. This is going to be like 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And in Kelvin, if you're at zero degrees Kelvin, it's going to be negative 273 uh, Celsius, and it's going to be <laughs> negative 459 degrees Celsius. You're going to be dead, and the same thing with 100, because it's still going to be really cold. Right, so it helps put things into perspective. All right, now when it comes to Kelvin temperatures, okay, the two conversions that we went over earlier in the year are you are adding 273 to your Celsius temperature, and if you are in Celsius and need to get out of, or if you're in Kelvin and need to get out of Kelvin into Celsius, you subtract the 273. So what is 98 Kelvin in degrees Celsius? Well, if I want degrees Celsius, I take this 98 Kelvin and I subtract 273 in my calculator. And what I get is negative 175 degrees Celsius. That's really cold. All right. What do I get if I am at 159 degrees Celsius and I want to get to Kelvin? 159 Celsius plus 273 is going to give me 432 Kelvin. All right, in this chapter, you are most likely going to use this equation, okay? And the big, 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 big thing to remember is you will never, ever have, whoops, I can't spell the word have, have a negative Kelvin temp. Never once. Okay, it doesn't exist. That's the whole point of Kelvin is not to have a negative value. All right, so make sure that you use your Kelvin temperatures and your pressure conversions well, and we shall see how they get used in our castles.